solved. Like one of them is the mechanical mismatch between humans and electronics, right? So electronics are boxy and rigid, humans are curvy and soft. That's a mechanical mismatch problem. Well, a researcher at the University of Illinois, his name is Dr. Rogers, what he discovered is that he could use standard CMOS techniques to make islands of high-performance silicon connected by accordion-like structures that would allow it to stretch up to 200% and still be performing. And what he did is he founded a company and they started making electronic tattoos. So I, I'm wearing one here on my arm. We, do we have here. a camera to get a... This is a, develop, this is a developmental system made by MC10, and it has a, an antenna and some sensors embedded in it. And what we plan to do is work with them to advance a tattoo that could be used for authentication. Now, it may be true that 10 to 20 year olds don't want to wear a watch on their wrist, but you can be sure that they'll be far more interested in wearing an electronic tattoo if only to piss off their parents, <laughs> right? And that can have a design, right? Because sure. they would certainly want some kind of cool design. Options, right? options. And that's something that you wear, but you could also imagine including authentication in just your daily habits. So I take a vitamin every morning. What if I could take vitamin authentication? What? Vitamin authentication. Look, I have one right here. Well, here, I'll let you hold it. Mm. Would you like to hold it? I'll hold it. OK. <laughs> so this. You guys see it? This pill has a small chip inside of it with a switch. It also has what amounts to an inside-out potato battery. When it's you small. swallow it, the acids in your stomach serve as the electrolyte, That's what do. and they power it up, and the switch goes on and off. And it creates an 18-bit ECG-like signal in your body, and essentially your entire body becomes your authentication token. Yes, this is true. Okay. Okay, but. Okay, so wait. But, but, so it's uh, it's really true. So what this means is that that becomes my first superpower. I really want this superpower. It means that my arms are like wires, my hands are like alligator clips. When I touch my phone, my computer, my door, my car, I'm authenticated in. First superpower. Like I want that. So so we're not shipping that right away. Yeah. No. <laughs> we're not shipping that right but, away. But it but sounds is it, like. Is it? This is FDA cleared. So here's the thing. This. This is not science fiction. This pill was actually made by a company called Proteus, and they've developed it for medical applications. That pill has been CE stamped and cleared by the FDA. You can take 30 of those per day for the rest of your life. And then what happens? Does your heart Nothing. beat change? Does your <laughs> We can just tell that you've you... taken the pill. I mean, the medical, app yeah. the medical application... Does Google is... now know everything I do? The world is on the verge of global change. The speed of data transmission has increased by multiples of millions. The rate of globally significant events and that of discoveries and crises is growing exponentially. Our civilization is like an uncaptained ship sailing on rough seas with neither chart nor compass, all the while moving faster and faster. The time we have to make the right decisions is shorter and shorter. We are facing the choice to fall into a new dark age, into affliction and degradation, or to find a new model for human development and create not simply a new civilization, but a new mankind. Historic crises show that to break the deadlock, we need technological revolution. It is clear that today's revolution will also require the deepest social transformation. The world's community and leaders should encourage mankind instead of wasting resources on solving momentary problems. To focus on the technologies of the future, nanotechnology, biotechnology, information technology, cognitive technology, genetics and robotics. Doing so will allow us to find new sources of energy, create fundamentally new architecture and transportation, allow unprecedented developments of human cognitive abilities, refine artificial intelligences and brain-computer interfaces, simulate complex systems, create humanoid robots and cyborgs, and with the help of nanorobots, we may develop manageable matter. Find ways to transfer one's personality to an artificial carrier. Yet what we need is not just another technological revolution, but a new civilizational paradigm. 
We need new philosophy and ideology, new ethics, new culture and new psychology, and even new metaphysics. We must reset our limits, go beyond ourselves, beyond the Earth and beyond the solar system. This is an adequate response to the challenges of our time. Thus, new reality and future man will arise. Could it happen spontaneously? when I touch my phone, my computer, my door, my car, I'm authenticated in. First superpower. Like, I want that. But, you know, the, the, the whole move of these implants, there are a couple of stupid companies like the Verichip Corporation, with all its various names, that come out and say, oh, well, we want to sell this as a product. I don't think it's going to happen that way. People don't want an ID microchip. But if you turn around and instead say, you'll be able to listen to music and access Facebook and, and, and uh, you know, get your email through this little implant, you're going to have a stampede of people wanting to do it. Because we...